Have you ever wanted to know the temperature of your living room at 2 o'clock in the morning? Or how cooking affects the temperature and humidity of your kitchen? Or what was the maximum or minimum temperature of your house in the last 30 days? No? Just me? Can't be. Temperature sensing is one of the main use cases I see for home automation systems. So I'm going to show you how I do mine. OK, let's talk about the sensors. Do not get one of these, these type thing. Cheap and cheerful just doesn't work for temperature sensors. I got a bunch, I think about six for three or four pounds each and they were terrible. I had them all at the same place and there were a big span of like three or four degrees of temperatures, humidity, one was stuck at 100%, one was stuck at 0% and that was like, there was a span of 20% with the others. I thought maybe it's just a calibration issue. I got to have like a a really accurate temperature sensor so I calibrated it to that but then within a day it was all gone again and so that was useless do not go cheap cheap it doesn't mean you have to go super expensive you just have to go just not the barely cheap ones just the next one up the ones I'm using currently are these ones um, I got these from Aliexpress I think they were like six or seven quid so like each not terrible I've got six of them across the house um, measuring the temperatures in all the different rooms and I'll show you how. So here we are in Zigbee to MQTT. I've already added it, but just to briefly, quickly explain. Click the permit to join button. There's a button on the top of it, which I hold and press. After a few minutes or seconds, the interview happens. Interview completes and the device joins the network. Um, I've given it the name temp slash lounge. And you can see here things exposed. So we get the temperature, we get the humidity, we get the battery. There's a whole host of settings here, like how often it reports the temperature, humidity. You can set an alarm, which I don't really see the point of um, and I don't use, but you can set the sensitivity as well. Um, and you get the link quality, how good the signal is. So that's adding it to MQTT. The important thing to remember is the name that we gave it. So now let's go to the coding. So we start with our little, with our little empty script. We are initiating the client class that we built. In another video and we've got our little while tree equals hack to make sure the script doesn't end so this is going to follow the same sort of patterns as the other videos first we need to subscribe to the topic um, so subscribe and then again this can be different depending on if you've changed your settings but So there we go, so we've got the ZigBee to MQTT base topic and then the temperature topic and then the lounge topic. So we're subscribing to this uh, topic and then when we receive a message, on message, we want to fire a function, a callback function like this, and then we need to define the function. And this takes a client, user data, and a message, which is a bit much integer. I'm just going to print the message for now. Check this works. So if I run this script, breaks. Oh, yeah, I don't need the breaks there. It's just a callback. Yep, that seems to be working. And the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to be using a thing called MQTT Explorer. And this just lets you see what messages are happening. So here's all the messages that are happening on my network. It also lets you send them. So I've put in the uh, topic here. I'm just going to publish this fake data. And as you can see, as I click that, we get some data appearing in the console. But obviously it's just printing a message object. So we're receiving the MQTT message by subscribing to the topic. So now we need to inspect the data and we need to know what the data is going to look like. So if you go to your Zigbee to MQTT page and you click on the model number. This will open the Zigbee to MQTT website. And here it's going to show you all the different um, endpoints that come through. Uh, but an easier way to see this is if you look at MQTT Explorer, you can open it up see everything all the topics that are going on this is all what's going on in my house click a temperature click anyone 
and you can see here here's an example of the data we get so we're obviously interested in temperature and probably humidity and that looks fairly straightforward so we go back to our code and let's get the so let's put this anymore let's get the payload equals message dot payload dot decode utf-8 and then we're just gonna uh, that comes as a string so we need to convert it into an object and now we can print data temperature okay so that should give us the temperature now so let's go to the script let's play it let's go back to our explorer publish this 30 and just to prove that i'm not faking it make that eight eight so we're now getting the temperature oh we should get the, the humidity as well so if i just make sure I'm in the same topic. Just put a comma here. Humidity 40. And that is now not going to change that anymore because we're not getting it here. So let's just go temp equals this. Humi, I'm going to call it. Humi. Humidity, and then I'm just going to print temp equals temp humi equals humi. Let's cancel, cancel, go, send, there okay. go, nice. So now we can get the data from the sensor and basically what, what happens is it just periodically sends the data and we can get the temperature and the humidity and we can get it out. We need to do something with this data so that we can make pretty graphs like this. So this is the temperature that I, this was the temperature in my kitchen that I've been logging. And you can see the nice dips and peaks and valleys as the day and the night it gets really hot maybe when i was cooking or had the oven on these ones maybe we had takeaway i don't know but this is the kind of graph you can make we're going to need a place to store this data maybe like a sort of a base for this data some sort of data base data place um yeah we're going to need a database so i use a mysql database so i'll show you mine it's just a uh, MySQL workbench and here you can see I've got a database called data center I've got some food tracking and some weight tracking which is another story um, but here I have a table called temp data so there's five columns I'll just quickly briefly walk you through them row ID auto incrementing just to give the ID ID just to give a row an ID the time which is the current timestamp so when something gets inserted this will store the time of that insert so we don't need to tell the database the time of the reading of the sensor. And then we have sensors because we need to know which sensor this data is um, associated with, which room it is, and then we have the temperature and the humidity. So there's our basic table. So the three bits of data we need to send to this database are the sensor, the temperature and the humidity. So one, we've got a temperature, we've got humidity, now we just need this name and so we can get this from the topic which it should be up here uh, and I'll just put this here topic equals topic oops name let's go to this oh look we're getting some readings in uh, this there we go now we can see the topic I mean, if i'm being a bit lazy but you could you should probably just remove the dbt mqtt and then you get temp lounge 
Well, actually, you should probably remove Zigbee to MP. Well, in fact, let's do that. I'm just going to say name equals name dot replace that blank. And it could fucking match the spaces. Okay. And then let's run it. Send the message. There we go. So we've got eight and forty to bridge lounge. Nice. So we need a way to connect to the database. So I'll just pre queue. I've got a wrapper which I've written. So I'll just briefly walk you through that. It's based around the MySQL connector package. When you initiate it, you connect to the database. Choose a data set. Choose your database. Choose a host. Choose your name, password. Super secure. Um, and then there's just a function to query it. That's a fetch query. Super simple. So we just execute the query and return the cursor. We're not actually going to be fetching data here. I'm just going to show you how to um, enter the data. You can do the fetching and the analysis yourself. Okay, so back to my sketch. I'm just going to do from database import database. And then at the very start, I'm just going to say db equals database. Okay, so now we just need to write the query to add it into the database. There's probably better ways of doing this, but this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to temp data sensor temp oh that's what we're doing humidity did I really go humidity and temp why don't I go humid never mind values Name. We're doing temp. Temp. Humi. That's the query, and then db query, query, and that should put in the database. So save that, run that, run the code, press publish in the test. Okay, so now if I go to here, just look in. We go 840 temp lounge. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to change this to 400 and this to 48. I'm going to publish. I'm going to run the same thing. 48 400. Okay, so that's how you get the data into your database. And now you can make pretty graphs like this. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time. If you got this far, you obviously really like my content, please consider subscribing. It really helped me out. Thanks.